So this video is an introduction to uh, another uh, Prius video uh, where we talk about the uh, household uh, requirements or electrical requirements for uh, charging the uh, Toyota Prius Prime. Okay, uh, I did a really good in, uh, in a previous video, but I've made it way too long and so I'm breaking that video up into multiple videos and that's what this video is all about. So this is just a brief introduction to, to tell you about the topic. You may or may not be interested in it. Uh, and this goes for business too. You know, if you got 240, uh, we talk about that. Um, so that's about it. I, I did, you know, I always like to hit on just a couple other little things uh, every now and then with these videos. Um, I checked into the rear view mirror for the uh, Prius Prime because I wanted a compass. I, I tell you, I, I can't tell you the number of times I'm out with the cell phone and they either don't have service or it says it's unable to talk to Google with the assistant or you bring up the compass and it can't, you know, anyway, the digital compass, I mean, it works great when it works great, but I mean, where I go up in the mountains and stuff, I, so I need a manual compass. And uh, so the one for the mirror, I think they wanted like five or $600 <laughs> for a rear view mirror. And then I went after market and I, I don't even go there. You know what? The Sunto, S-U-U-N-T-O, uh, I think, uh, the M2 right now is on sale at their website for uh, $54. Now, when you compare that to $500, that's a bargain. And so what I'm going to do is just keep a regular manual compass. And the nice thing is then when I go hiking or uh, hopefully maybe backpacking overnight trip, I can always take that compass with me and then you got a manual compass. It's waterproof and... Uh, so, I mean, you get what you pay for. You can buy one of those cheap compasses, but, uh, you know, I, I tell you, don't compromise on that. The other thing I'm going to be doing to the car, and I'll let you know how it goes, is there's a film that you can put over the front of the car because uh, I'm going to be driving about two or 3,000 miles. We'll get some videos on that. You're going to want to watch those. And uh, so in, the, in these Democrat states, the roads are in bad shape, and you're going to get a lot of rocks and sand. Um, you know, or just northern states, I guess I should say, and because uh, I may be going up into Michigan or the UP, and um, so I want to make sure the front end's protected, and I'm hoping that film is going to protect against the small stuff. Nothing's going to protect them against a huge rock that flies into the front of the car. Um, the other thing is they make a, a film, they're saying, that goes over the inside of the car that's going to block those UV rays and keep the car a lot cooler, which would be really good for here in Florida. Um, you can get it tinted, but I, you know, the tinting laws are, are I got to go through Tennessee. I understand the tinting laws are real strict there. I just don't want to run into any um, legal entanglements uh, with the police or anything. So I'm just going to put, every, you know, there's a clear film that you can put around on the windows in the Prius. Um, and that's fairly inexpensive. That was only like 150 Now the the, the, the the film for the front, that's a thousand bucks. So that's a lot of money, but I mean, you know, when you consider you paid, uh, well, it was twenty nine, well, thirty five thousand all said toll. So what's another thousand, you know, to protect the car? I mean, if I drive up to the UP and, and it, I get all kinds of scratches in the paint and that's a four hundred dollar addition or four hundred fifty dollar addition on the paint job. So you do the math. I, I, you know, I can't stand spending the money, but I'm hoping I'm going to keep this car for the rest of my life. All right. So that's it. So enjoy the electrical discussion. If you if. You know, you can always tune out and say, all right, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not concerned about the electrical requirements for my home um, for the Prius. Uh, don't, you know, you can always read the manual. You don't need to listen to me. All right, guys. Peace out. Let's get into the first one uh, because I think this is the first thing you're going to really have to deal with once you get your uh, Prius Prime home. Uh, and that is your charging environment. Uh, what is involved there? And I, you know, I'll, I know... You can read the manual, I can read the manual, but let's read the manual first and then I'll give you my interpretation or what I'm going to do so that you can kind of, you know, uh, go along with uh, what I'm going to do or not, you know. Uh, for safe charging, the following charging equipment and settings are recommended. A weatherproof outlet. Um, is that necessary? I, you know, because I got mine parked in my garage. Well, your garage is considered, you know, you really can, here in Florida anyway, you, your garage is really outside the house, in my opinion. I mean, you go in there, you're going to find spiders and I find roaches in there. You know, it's, it's, uh, I haven't seen, well, I've seen lizards and <laughs> no, no mice. Uh, 
and uh, you know roaches occasionally so you know it's it's really outdoors and it's very humid in there and it's hot uh so yeah i really do think that you're going to want to get a weatherproof outlet and what kind of weatherproof outlet do you want okay uh so here at uh all right they're recommending a gfci okay uh you know, you could probably get away with just using a, um, uh, a weatherproof outlet because uh, you got it on a circuit breaker. And uh, we'll get into it, but one of the things that they say is they want a dedicated line. A dedicated line just means that you have a breaker in the box that connects directly to the outlet that you're plugging uh, the uh, Toyota Prius Prime into to charge the battery up. Okay, now that's a that's a lot uh, a lot of money because you know if you're going to pay an electrician, you know he's got to get down in that breaker box and he's going to run that wire through the wall uh, and then uh, and then have a you know bring that into the GFCI have to put in a box. Now if you can do a lot of that work yourself, which I can, okay, uh, I might I might do that someday when I'm really bored. <laughs> but for now, for now I just got it plugged into a duplex outlet, uh, and that's 15 amp. And you could go, uh, you know, one of the things they point out, uh, your charge time goes way down to 2.5 hours or so uh, if you use a 240 outlet. But the thing about a 240 is, uh, unless you have specialized equipment. You know, you've done all of that work going into the breaker box, and the only thing you can plug into it is your is your hybrid uh, um, EV. And then how much you're going to use it? And, and I'm not going to use it that much. So you, you're going to we'll, we'll get into that uh, it, later in the video. Um, so the, you know that's that kind of gets into that. Let's do a little more reading here. Uh, power source precautions. Um, and this is what they were saying. Connect to an AC 120 volt outlet, NEMA 5-15R, 15R, that's 15 amp. Um, and, and the great thing is 15 amp, you can use it for your vacuum cleaner in the garage. You can plug your uh, power saw into the 15 amp outlet. You know, so that outlet, you know, and I, I put a four banger in there. Why not? You know, get, get one of the bigger boxes and put four outlets. And because you know what, I, I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, in my in my wall, uh, in a previous video, you'll see there was an outlet. It was mainly for carts, just to plug your cart in. And I guess that's the big thing right here in this retirement community. But you only had a one one outlet, one duplex, and so you know, of course, you're going to have a power strip off of that, which is makes it uh, more dangerous rather than just having the outlets right in the wall. So anyway, uh, you do what you want um, with a ground fault. Uh, circuit interrupter gfci we talked about that and supplied by a circuit breaker per your local code uh and that's where the electrician would come in i don't know the local code i knew it up in michigan i, I imagine it's basically the same here in florida and like i said doing a lot of the work i can cut through the drywall i got a drywall guy that can come in and he can fix all of that for me um so you know, because I'm not a drywall. I mean, everybody's got their niche in life. And, uh, man, this guy can come in and he's an artist. You'd never even know that I just tore the hell out of the wall putting putting in. Because I can put the box in. I can run the wire. And then I'll just have the electrician come in uh, and put the circuit breaker in the box and run the wire into the box. Uh, so, And then, of course, he might have some, some recommendations uh, as to what I'm doing and, and say, you know, you need to, you need to rethink this. Um, and am I going to pay a bit for that? Yeah, but oh well. Um, do not connect the charging cable to a multi-outlet adapter, mini plugs, or conversion plug. Uh, connecting the charging cable to an extension cord. Yeah, because your cord... You know what, if, though? If you got a heavy-duty cord, um, you know, like I've got some, I don't think it'd be a problem. But, uh, you know, most people don't. They got those, those regular, uh, you, I don't know if you've seen them, they're pretty thin. Well, especially the really thin ones for like connecting a lamp to it or something. No, you would never use something like that. But a heavy duty uh, cord, uh, you could probably, you just got to look at the gauge of the wire, okay, in, in the power cord. And, and you, any hardware store, they'll tell you what a heavy duty power cord is. So I'm just giving you my input on that. Because the cord may overheat, yeah, if you put the wrong uh, uh, power cord on there. And then do not connect to a power strip. Uh, right now, i got to connect it to a power strip. <laughs> so, 
I don't see a big deal. I, 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 now, are you going to want to check it? I checked that wire on the power strip, and uh, it, it wasn't overheating. It was just fine. Uh, I don't want to leave it like that. You know, but mainly, I, I probably just plug it into the plug in, in the wall, uh, and that'd be safer. Um, and that's about it.